is Mark Aldrin. Welcome to Music with Mark. Uh, today, like I said, last month on the show, we're doing something totally different today. We're not going to bring a little music to you. But what I'm blessed today because I, we have driver Morgan Shepard on the show today. And it's a blessing to have him here. And I want him to share today, uh, like I said last month, about his Racing with Faith Ministries and how you can be involved with him and his race team and uh, kind of share his heart about that today. So, Morgan, thank you for being on the show today. It's a blessing. And... Uh, We'll just get right into it. Uh, I'd like to kind of know uh, how you got involved with Racing with Faith Ministries, uh, what do you do outside the racetrack, uh, and then also how the viewers and myself, can, how more can we be involved in your ministry as well? Well, first of all, Mark, uh, this all started back uh, February the 23rd, 1975, uh, when I accepted Christ. And, you know, uh, before then, uh, I was pretty much a waste to the world. Uh, you know, I feel like that uh, we're here to make a difference, not to uh, tear the world down. And, and you and I both have an opportunity to uh, be in front of people. And if you're in front of people, uh, you need to lead them in the right way. And, uh, and God's way is the only right way. But uh, before February the 23rd, I was pretty much a drunk. Uh, all I cared about was Morgan Shepherd. And this is the average person. Uh, you're selfish, and uh, you only care about yourself. You could care less about, uh, we've, we've got a charity we've been, that's going on 24 years now. And um, uh, before then, I could have cared less about those handicapped people in the mountain. I could have cared less about somebody's house getting burnt down and, and trying to help them out. But uh, uh, God let me get to the most miserable point in my life and um, I'd went to Daytona for the race down there, and and um, I was married at the time. And and uh, when I come back home, uh, my wife had left me, and I said, "Well, I'll just live it up, you know. I, I don't need no wife." And and uh, so I I had me a few girlfriends uh, in different uh, towns around, and and so I called this girl at Florida, and uh, I flew her up, and uh, we spent the weekend together, and and uh, partied, drank, and, and uh, you know, I, I woke up on Sunday morning, had those old dry heaves. I don't know, I, I know there's a lot of drunks out there that's, uh, that's been that sick. And I got to thinking, you know, Morgan, if this is all so good and, uh, and uh, I'm having such a good time, how come the only time I feel good is when I'm drunk? And when I'm not drunk, then I'm sick, uh, my family life is a uh, mess. My wife had left me, um, and I, I started thinking about friends. You know, it had good family lives, get to spend times, time with their kids and stuff. And I, I just started got to thinking about all this. Here we're supposed to be the smartest beings on earth, and uh, we're we're above the animals and everything else. How could I be so stupid to uh, to live this way? And, and abuse myself and abuse the people around me, hurt friends and hurt family, and uh, there's something wrong with this picture. And so uh, I told the girl, I said, I'm gonna put you on a plane and send you back home. I sent her back home. And um, then Monday came and uh, I was driving down the road and I, I was still thinking about all this and tears coming in my eyes. I couldn't hardly see where I was going. And, and on Tuesday, I was uh, um, driving around and sort of same thing. I was one miserable human being. God had let me get to the lowest point in my life and this is the way I felt. Um, that evening when I went home, I either had to shoot myself in the head or something had to change. And so my little house, I fell down on, on my knees or at the bed and I'd been to church all my life and I knew you know, and I'd probably said the words, and I know I was uh, baptized uh, in in a river when I was about 12, and uh, baptism doesn't get you to heaven, though. It's accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. But I got down on my knees, and I started praying, and, and I knelt there, and when I got done praying, I felt like I could jump straight through the roof of my house. It, uh, it was like a thousand pounds had been taken off of me, and uh, uh, God changed my life right there. 
from the selfish person that only thought about Morgan Shepherd to the person that cared about others. And um, God didn't bless me in racing. I've been racing 43 years, started in 1967, and uh, I'm still in the Nationwide Series, and we're using it as a tool to uh, carry the Jesus logo and uh, uh, to spread the gospel, and uh, what a great opportunity. Not jumping around here and there, but we've, we've had emails from Russia, Germany, Australia, all over the world, people saying they appreciate our stand. But uh, back to Morgan Shepherd, what he was, uh, I went to l the local church and joined the church, and, and of course the first thing you hear is some ladies that uh, about two weeks there, she said, uh, w this other girl was telling me, she said, well, we just seen him at the liquor store about two weeks ago, you know. Your, your people is supposed to uplift you, help you, you know. But, but that's the price of sin. You're always going to hear about the bad you've done in your life and, and not about the good. You'll never do enough, and we can never be good enough for Jesus Christ. But, but when Jesus Christ came into my life, I hated everything that alcohol and drugs had done to people. I wasn't a drug person back then. That was before th that stuff got in, but uh, I drank a lot. And uh, uh, many a time I could have killed somebody on a highway with my the way I was driving and all. So I'm very fortunate that I'm not in prison, and there's a many a good man that's in prison that if he wouldn't have taken that drink uh, or woman, uh, that's, that's there. And uh, they've, they've wasted their lives by taking that drink. But uh, God showed me a way, and he didn't make me wealthy overnight. That, that was in 75. I've always loved racing, always loved cars. And, and finally, in 1989, he blessed me financially. And through the 90s, he blessed me uh, driving for Bud Moore and, and, and the Woods Brothers and uh, uh, winning uh, races and uh, uh, just uh, really doing good in racing. But then God uh, brought me back to reality again, and I didn't understand all of it. In 98, I was doing my own team. Uh, hope this ain't too much for all of it. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, 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 yes. Uh, but anyway, in 98, I was preparing for the future because I'm getting older, and so uh, um, I had a race shop and had all these homes, had all these motor graders, had all this property. Racing had really been good to me. So I signed a $25 million contract with uh, insurance agencies. There's 21 of them, very uh, wealthy people. And uh, I built this team, and next thing I know, they said, uh, we're going to, this was going in, this was 98, going in 99. They said, we're going to wait till the year 2000. I said, you can't. I've done spent all this money and we're building all this stuff. Anyway, make a long story short, they backed out on me and left it in a lawsuit. Took me 2002 to get into court and uh, get in court, win the lawsuit, uh, and, uh, and they never paid me. And that man is in prison now for another thing he did. Does, doesn't do me any good. But God took all this away from me, all these uh, material things that I had but that didn't change Morgan Shepherd. I could still go out and, and tell people about Jesus, and I could ask people for money to help our handicapped people for our charity and different things that we do in the mountains. So, so you've got to stay faithful. You know, I've been on both sides of the fence. Nothing, and I was that selfish person. Jesus Christ changed my life they, and, and had to wait. All of it's about faith. You've got to be faithful or what God wants to do with you. And and so then I go into the 2000 there, broke, had nothing, didn't even have a home, once had five homes. Well, stuck faithful, carried right on through with everything I was doing, and then a couple young men come along and put me back on my feet, and um, uh, they uh, buy this motor home for me so we can do the ministry in racing. They laid out a five-year plan, and... Uh, we're, we're not wealthy people. It takes a lot of money to be here in racing. We don't have big sponsors. But uh, if there's anybody out there that would like to see what we do, go to morganshepherd.com or Faith Motorsports on the web, and uh, you can get involved and you can help support it because it takes a lot of money to uh, make the cars go around the track. And that's the reason you don't see us run the whole race uh, because we don't have the big sponsors. Uh, some races we can run. We're going to run here at Texas uh, uh, deal uh
Undertakers.com uh, is a coupon company based here in Texas. They're going to sponsor us here this race, and uh, so uh, uh, it's been a it's been a fun ride, and I have no idea what the Lord has got for me next, and uh, it's just uh, uh, it's it's been great to be on this side of fence, and I don't know where we're going to end up here on Earth. But I know where I'm going to end up when I leave here. I'm going to be in heaven, and I just want to take a lot of souls with me. That's the only thing I can do. We're going to explain to everybody what Racing for Faith Ministries is and how many events and what all charities that you are involved with outside of the racetrack. Well, of course, our biggest deal is Morgan Shepherd uh, Charities. And uh, we, uh, we're not just in Virginia, but that's the big part of our program that we'll do this December the 13th this year. And this will be our 24th year going to Virginia Mountains. And we help mostly handicapped people uh, there. And, uh, and we've built some homes there. And, and we'll, we'll take, I think this year we took about 1,500 gift bags. Uh, Kelly Pickler came this year and did a concert for us uh, up at First Baptist Church at Galax. And uh, uh, it's just a very rewarding day for us to be able to go out and ask people to help out. And and give back to the community there but uh, we do other things uh, in in other places uh, you know whether it's sending money to help in Africa or or whether it's local there in North Carolina uh, if somebody needs help somebody gets burnt out or something uh, we try to help out but uh, that's the biggest part of our ministry other than at the racetrack we work with Raceway Ministries which is outside the racetrack matter of fact at Talladega uh, my friend Walter Talent, um, he'll he'll do a concert down there, and 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 we'll go out and and um, of course we we have a lot of lively people out there, but but we get up and uh, uh, we ease into it. They they play some rock and roll music and stuff, but but then I get up there and I tell them about Jesus. I tell them what uh, I use Josh that was uh, hit by a drunk driver in a lot of my speaking engagements. How much a carton of beer costs. And uh, he's in his wheelchair the rest of his life because uh, a 16-year-old drinking uh, drunk uh, hit him. And uh, so uh, I've, I've got a big stand-up of uh, me and Josh, and um, I, I use him. It's been a very powerful tool. I've been on Trinity Broadcasting and 700 Club, and I know when I was on Trinity, there was, a, uh, and and we prayed uh, about the, the drinking and the, the carton of beer and stuff. Uh, there was a guy all the way in Africa, 39 years old, that uh, that got saved, and he traced me down where I went to church at Gateway and sent something to my preacher. So we know through what you and I are doing that we can reach people all over the world, and this is a great platform here, and I'm, I'm so thankful to NASCAR and Nationwide that they allow us to do this here, and, um, and of course, uh, I work with MRO also inside the racetrack. That's... Uh, uh, we have church uh, before each event. Also, there's a way uh, you can they can put your name on your car yes. to be involved. Uh, kind of explain to them a little bit about that. Okay. Well, we uh, uh, we have this uh, thing on our car. It's fans for faith, and uh, they can uh, buy a spot on the car. It's five by seven uh, for a hundred dollars, and uh, and we put their names on the car. And we've had names all over the car doing this. And, and this is just a little way of uh, uh, help keeping us going. And, and I know a lot of the race fans doesn't realize how much money it actually takes to, to get here. You know, it's $1,200 entry and then a set of tires is 1700 and some dollars. And then you've got engine expense that's, that's way high. So most people have no idea what it really costs to be here. But uh, what's the price of a soul, you know? And, and there's been many many people's lives changed because of this i know on our charity trip we had 29 saved on that trip and and everything we do here in racing involves around uh the race and our all our ministries and charities and everything so uh many lives have been changed just like the guy i told you about in africa uh, we just have to keep telling people about jesus and how he can truly change your life and because i know truly what I was, and I didn't care about nobody but me before February the 23rd, 1975, and uh, whether I've got anything or nothing, I can still tell people about Jesus, and I can still tell pu help others. Now, when you go to, like, certain states all over the country, 
Are you available to go to a church and speak while you're in that town? Or can they communicate to you to get you to, to speak in an engagement? Or uh, when you're in a certain town, do you like of an evening go out and do charitable events where people that live in that town can come and be a part of you and part of what you do? You know, I used could do that, but we are so small now that I'm sort of the kingpin. And if, uh, if I'm not with everything, yes, to answer that, though, I do things. But uh, it has to very well be planned uh, because uh, if I'm not with the car, it doesn't get through inspection and it doesn't, and the work doesn't get done because I've just got a few guys. I think I got one guy back at home at works, and then then I got uh, my truck driver and, and two other guys here. So uh, there's a, these other teams have hundreds of people to do all the, the work, you know. So uh, I, yes, I do stuff. But we really had to plan it out, and I do speak in different churches and go to schools and different things like that. What are, is there any other ways that we can be involved uh, uh, with you besides just the car and the donating to your website? Well, you know, best thing is to tell people what what we're doing here, you know, and uh, uh, because it really takes corporate America to uh, to build a team like you should be able to build it. And uh, we have to have people that uh, can put that kind of funding in it uh, when it comes to a, a real race team, just like building a ball team or, or anything else. It takes a lot of dollars. But just pray for us. You know, pray that God will send us something. Uh, he, uh, uh, I mean, many races, I didn't think there was going to be no way I was going to get to the next one. And he always provides a way. So, uh, so pray for us and uh, tell somebody. Uh, about this uh, traveling ministry that uh, um, Jesus uh, is right on the hood and uh, he loves to go 200 mile an hour. I like going 200 myself. Uh, Morgan, if you don't mind, for about the last five minutes or so of the show, um, I'd just like to open this up. If you'd like to share your heart to the viewers, is there anything you'd like to tell them, share your heart, testimony, uh, anything you'd like to share that God's laid on your heart, just open it up to you. Well, Thank you. You know, first of all, I'd say uh, don't be uh, as stupid as Morgan Shepherd was. And uh, uh, the Bible does have stupid in it. And, and I was one of those before February the 23rd. Uh, you know, uh, you, you think that uh, this is just your body and you can do with it whatever you want to. Uh, this is yours to use. Uh, your soul's going to go somewhere, and uh, it's either heaven or hell. And I'm not sitting here telling you that you're going to go to hell. I'm just telling you that I believe in the Word of God, and uh, that's what the Word of God says. My faith is in Jesus Christ. So uh, you can decide where you want to end up after this life, and uh, you think it's all fun and games now. But uh, I'm telling you, you let Jesus Christ into your heart and you'll find a new human being that, uh, that's not thinking about self all the time, that's wanting to help others. Maybe, maybe that little old lady or, uh, or that person who uh, uh, has been fighting for us uh, to keep this country free and has lost his legs or his arms, uh, going out and catering to them. God gives you a heart for those who can't help themselves. And as a born-again Christian, that's what we got to do. we got to help others. Uh, we're, not, uh, we're not here to hand money out to, to people who can help themselves, but, but we're here to help those who can't. Help the little old lady, the little old man. Uh, spend a little time with them. If you don't have money, just uh, uh, tell them about Jesus and how good Jesus is. Thank you, David, for letting me be here. All righty. Uh, as we end the show, like I say, I want to thank Morgan again for being here today, and I look forward to doing this again uh, and everything. And like I say, you know, when my life was about a year ago, uh, I, I got the most of my bottom, and I was going to turn away and do my own thing, but God woke me up out of my diabetes and said, Mark, I'm not done with you yet. He can do all things through you. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And I'm thankful that uh, I can be his son and his child. And like I say, wide is the road and narrow is the path, and only few find it. And I want to be one of the few. And uh, 
I just pray that after this show that you'll get on the horn there and, and uh, you'll contact Morgan Shepherd Ministries and be involved with his ministry. Uh, get your name on the car. And uh, Now, Morgan, when they do that, do you send them anything in the mail showing their name on your car uh, so that way they can have like a little memento? Why don't you explain that to them, how they can do that? Well, you're really asking the wrong person. My, my daughter takes, takes care of all this stuff, but they do. They make sure that uh, uh, they get a picture of it, and uh, we send an autograph card and, and some things back to them. But uh, they'll, uh, they'll have it uh, to, uh, to recognize that, that they help support uh, Victor and Jesus Racing. Morgan, uh, real quick, we got about two minutes. Would you like to pray for the people out there to end the show? Father, uh, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. God, and I pray that uh, there's somebody out there that's, that's listening and somebody that t- can, can see their selves in, in myself, what I was, and, um, and realize that they have problems and uh, that, uh, that they'd want to get away from, from that kind of life. And, and be new again. And God, all they got to do is ask Jesus to come into their heart. And I pray that these people that's seeing this will listen to these, listen to this, and, and just uh, those that are saved will work on being better and, uh, and take what was said, find somebody, help them. That's what we're here for these things i asked in jesus name amen involved get your name on morgan shepherd's car i know he'd appreciate that and being supportive of that as well so uh with that i'm going to end the show and uh god bless you all and we'll see you next month